The goals of the, the course that I'm going to cover today is basically to, to give you an overview of basically all the, all the parts of blast resistant design um, as they apply to building structures. I'm going to have a couple of examples at the end, uh, but focus primarily um, on exterior cladding systems uh, in those examples. Um, but if we start off here, we're going to go with um, determining blast pressures from explosive size and standoff. So that's one of the basics that uh, you need to do. Uh, most There are many pieces of software today that do that automatically. However, I'm going to give you the, the basics of, of how that is done. Um, also, we're going to go through then determining the dynamic resistance of reinforced concrete components. Um, as an example, uh, similar procedures can be done for steel design. And then I'll follow that up with the basics of the single degree of freedom uh, design method, which is um, also tied, called the SDOF method. And then lastly, look at some uh, performance levels of buildings. So uh, this is a method in which you can tell whether or not your structure is safe, and it gives you the bounds on um, whether or not um, your structure passes the DOD or federal requirements. All right, so... Next slide. So as part of the material that you have here, uh, you should all have copies of the PDFs of slides. Uh, I do want to make one uh, note that I did change a couple of the slides at the end. So there is a, a new version that uh, if you don't already have it, um, you should be able to um, receive it shortly. It's essentially the same. I just uh, made a couple of corrections and added a few uh, SBEDS examples at the end. So you have um, your own copies and you can try some of the examples yourself. Um, in addition to that, uh, we've included the PDC response limits. This is the current document which is being used in the um, anti-terrorism community, community. The focus of this research really is on that aspect of uh, blast resistant design, uh, specifically anti-terrorism and force protection. It's uh, one of the many military acronyms which are used, um, ATFP type of design. So I'm not focusing on, uh, for example, um, um, refineries or any of those types of um, conflagration type explosives. So we're looking more as uh, explosives that are generated from uh, terrorist type bombings. So that's what this is going to focus on. And as a result, the, the PDC response limits um, are going to be used for the uh, majority of my discussion. In addition, a lot of the background can be found in the UFC 33402. Uh, both of these documents are distribution A, so which um, in military speak is, is basically um, uh, open distribution for all audiences. So you should be able to get copies of both of them. The PDC response limits we have included. It's basically a, um, a PD, PDF, which looks like this. Get it to the whole page. So it's a, it's a simple manual, which I'll go into some of the details of it, but it's uh, essentially uh, gives you a recommendation on what response limits to use for concrete, steel, and other types of materials. Go back to this, okay. The UFC document is a much larger document. Uh, I do have a copy of it and, and could probably get you one, but uh, the best bet is to just go online and um, track it down. Uh, it is available. Uh, it's open distribution. It's, very, it's a very big document and it was um, updated recently in 2008. And one thing to um, take into consideration when using the UFC uh, 340 is that that document was actually developed for storage of munitions. Uh, so it's not actually for anti-terrorism and force protection per se. It's, it's again, it's for um, storing munitions on military bases and different sites. However, a lot of the information which I'll be talking about today and a lot of the techniques used in blast resistant design follow the same type of concepts um, that are presented in, in extreme detail in this manual. It's, uh, it's a 1,000 it's to 2,000 pages long. So if you want some, some really in-depth background that's free, um, that's a good manual to dig into uh, when you have the time. So let's get started. The, the first topic that I want to talk about is demands. So blast demands come in three forms. Um, the one that we are most concerned about or, or um, most used to dealing with from an anti-terrorism um, perspective is a surface blast. So this is where you have a detonation which occurs on the ground and uh, generates a pressure wave that um, basically radiates, radiates outward from the center of the detonation. Uh, the next type of demand that you would have would be a free air burst. So for this type of case, it would be a bomb which would explode in the air. 
Um, this generates a spherical uh, pressure wave, which generates from the center of the detonation um, and has no interaction with the ground surface. The third type uh, gets a little more comp complicated is termed an airburst. And this is a case where you have an in-air detonation, but the, there's interaction with the ground. So as you can imagine, as the detonation occurs, pressure waves radiate off of the, of the detonation and move toward um, the ground and actually reflect off the ground.